Hello again everyone, Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. In this video, we're going to be troubleshooting this gaming desktop computer here. And the issue that this customer says that they were having was that there was no power, flashing lights, and the fans would spin up and then stop. So it is up to us to determine exactly what symptoms she is talking about. So I had this computer plugged in and I have this positioned in such a way. Simple setup here, micro ATX motherboard, Cooler Master Cooler, fans. Power button is up front here where you can't see it. So I'm going to go ahead and power this on. And you see we get the fan spinning and then they stop. Fan spinning. Stop. All right, that's going to be what this does. GPU fans aren't spinning. I look here to the front and every time the fans spin the power light comes on on the power button and it turns off. So we just have a power button light that flashes one time and fans that spin up for a couple of seconds and spin down. That everyone is called a power cycle in computer terms. So now it's up to me to figure out why we are power cycling. Could be a number of things. Could be something simple. It could be something uh, more serious. Where should we start on this? Interestingly enough, a simple thing to try first, and I, I've seen this before, is uh, we're gonna power it down and remove that graphics card. And I'm going to reset the CMOS. We're gonna try that first. I'm going to go ahead and pull the, pull the power plug, shut this down. I'm going to take this card out and uh, we're going to see where we're going to reset this CMOS. Looking on the board here, obviously there's the CMOS battery. And I'm looking for a two-pronged pin header here that's for the CMOS. I see one right here. There's a two-pronged header. It's the only two-prong header I see on this entire board. So I am going to say that that is the CMOS header. Yep, it's the only one on the whole board. And it's fairly close to the CMOS battery. So we'll pop the battery. All right, that's loose, that's out. Go ahead and get a jumper and get a jumper on that header there. Jumper that. Oop, missed it. All right, one or two, three seconds, doesn't matter. Pull it back off. Punch that CMOS battery back in there. Okay, and we're gonna try to power this on again and see what results we get. I'll put the video card back in and see how it does. Okay, so I didn't tighten the card down or anything because there's a chance I may have to remove this board or remove the card again. So I just popped it in its slot Got the power to it, like so. And uh, now, I'm not gonna plug any of the keyboard, mouse, monitor in this, because I just wanna see a change in behavior. So I know it's kinda of tough to see from your angle. Let me just go ahead and spin this, so you can see it. There you go. And I just wanna see a difference in the behavior of the fans, and of course, the power light the power button light. So I plug this in, got it plugged back in, and let's see if we get a different behavior now. Go ahead and hit the power button. Power's up. Oh, power's down. Power's up. Power's down. Okay. We're not getting any difference in behavior on this setup so far. So now we're going to have to take it to the next step. It usually isn't the RAM in these situations that's the issue, but you know, I always want to take the simple steps first before I start getting into more labor intensive steps. So just for the fun of it, I am going to pull the plug here. I'm going to pull one stick of RAM. Got that RAM pulled. And we're going to try it again. Got it plugged in. I just want to change in and the way it's booting up, that's all I want. Nope. It's 
So that's not it either. Kind of figured that, but we have to eliminate it. We have to eliminate it. All right, got it powered off. Let's go ahead and pull this other stick of RAM here. I mean, now obviously it's not going to boot up or anything. I'm just looking for a change in pattern. Pull that stick. Let's do no RAM. See if we got a change in pattern. No RAM. Power it up. Yeah. No change. Mmm, this is not looking good. Not looking good. Not looking good. So, you know, I'm kind of leaning towards motherboard or processor. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards motherboard, but before I make that final test there for that, I still want to eliminate some, some easier troubleshooting. So I want to go ahead and plug in my bench power supply here, bypass this power supply that's in this computer, and see if we get any change. I want to go ahead and put these back in. Didn't think it was the RAM, but you always have to never, never assume anything in this line of work. As soon as you say, oh, I've seen this before, it's this or it's that, uh, it'll, it'll change on you. It'll shock you. Go. And let me get my uh, test power supply hooked up here. We'll give it a try again. Okay, now everyone, I have bypassed the power supply of this computer. I have my bench test power supply plugged in. 24 pin. This here is the CPU header uh, power pin to the, to the CPU. And this is the video card one plugged in. And I'll go ahead and hit that power button and see if we get a change in pattern from these fans. Power button's here. Power's up. Spins down. Power's up. Spins down. Same exact pattern. Okay, that now tells me that uh, in almost all likelihood we either have a power, I mean, um, a motherboard issue or a processor issue. I am really leaning towards that motherboard now. So here's what I can do here. I think what I can do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the processor and I'm going to place that processor in my known good bench motherboard along with this RAM and this video card. And if that, if I get a post off of that, then we have pretty much determined that it's this motherboard. I tell you what though, I'm going to try one more thing, just one more thing. I'm going to disconnect this USB, this USB 3 connector here. I'm going to pull that. I'm going to pull the front panel header. And over here is a USB header. I'm pulling that. All right. Now I know I have everything disconnected from the board. And I'm going to try this one more time. That is one thing you need to try is remove everything from the board. I'm going to be using a jumper screwdriver here to jumper this to see if I can get this to power on and we'll just jump it. It's powering on and powering down just as I thought. Power up, power down. Yep. So no change, no change. Had to try it though. Okay. Let me get this out. See if we can see if we can get to the bottom of that there. This is an 1151 socket motherboard. I have an 1151 test uh, test bench motherboard. So that is what I will be putting this processor into. This is a i5. Looks like a 9600KF. Okay, and I won't take that out until I have my other board up here ready to ready to swap. So we'll do that now.
all right I'm gonna put me a little teeny bit of thermal paste on there and I'm gonna go ahead and use this stock heat sink I just want to see this post is all I want to see I've got that 1151 processor in here that i5 I've got a stock heat sink on there with a little bit of thermal paste I've got the RAM out of the customer's original computer. I've got the video card out of the customer's original computer. And I've got my test power supply hooked up to everything in here. <coughs> and this is a known good working motherboard from my bench. I've got the, I've also, I've also have the monitor plugged in here. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and go through the whole process. Basically, if this, if this powers up and gives me a post, uh, pretty much that eliminates everything except for the, the motherboard is bad basically on that other computer so let me go ahead and power this on okay we got lights we got fans I have cleared the CMOS on this bench motherboard since we're got a different processor in it I'm still waiting I'll be getting a little spin up and spin down it's probably a pretty good sign there Still waiting on a post. Sometimes it takes a minute. Still waiting, still waiting. Yep, power's down. Power's up. I think we're going to get a post here. feel pretty positive about that. Okay, we still have no post. Well, I'm going to power this down. No post. It did uh, power off and power back on for a moment. That usually is what it does when it starts to recognize a new processor. But I still have no post. So I'm going to power this down. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Let me... I haven't still have yet to see the fan spin up on this video card. So I'm going to put a known good video card in here. Let's do that now. Okay, we have a different video card in here, just a, a basic, uh, just a basic bench video card. I'll we'll power this up one more time. See if we can get a post off of this. Oh, we got a post. Look at that. Got a post right there. Immediately, immediately. So let me, um, I'm not really sure what happened there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the other video card back in here and test it one more time. Maybe it just needed a little reboot. Sometimes that happens. Oh. All right, let's power this up one more time with the original video card in it. Wow, no video. No video. Oh my goodness. You know, unfortunately, it's looking like that this customer has a bad motherboard and a bad video card. This hasn't gotten no response at all, and I'm getting no display. So unfortunately, it looks like she lost the motherboard and the video card in some way. So that's very unfortunate. RAM is good because we got a post. Processor's good because we got a post. Now I could try to put this processor back into that other, back into the motherboard and see if I can use a test video card. But it, I was still just getting that um, power cycling. I mean, that a video card wouldn't cause that. I mean, it's working here. I'll try that anyways just to see. But uh, that's where that's where I am with this right now. So I'll try that. I'll try putting this processor and this memory back in the original case, and I'll use a test power supply of test video card and see if that changes anything but I really don't I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty positive that they have a bad video card and a bad motherboard let's confirm that okay I'm going to take this a step further just to confirm the power supply is in good shape for the most part we have here the the two uh the 24 pin and the CPU cables there what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a piece of paper on top of this motherboard. Then I'm going to take our known working test motherboard with the known working GPU and the two working 
sticks of RAM and I'm just going to plug this power supply in this case into this. Now the piece of paper is to keep the bottom of the bench test motherboard from shorting out on anything underneath it. But I want to confirm that this power supply is indeed okay also. Can't just assume anything, so I'm just going to plug in our monitor. No portion of this test board is touching anything metal, anything underneath it. Uh, so it's safe to apply power now to the power supply on this computer, so let's, let's do that. I have all suspicions that this power supply is going to be okay, but we have to test to be 100% sure. Because if I get a new motherboard and a new video card, and I use that same power supply, and I still don't, something else, you know, if that power supply has issues, uh, you know, that would be something that I missed, and I don't want to miss anything. So I'm going to go ahead here and power this up. see if we get a post and we should and we do have a post here and of course now that just tells me that most likely that power supply is pretty much okay so that confirms that okay we pretty much just confirmed that this customer's motherboard and video card is has seen its last days i'm going to go ahead and get that priced out and um, get that priced out and get her a quote. And those are gonna be the parts that we re-replace on this computer. Just wanna take you guys along for the ride to show how I troubleshoot issues related to power cycling on a desktop gaming computer, I hope. This helps somebody out. I'm Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. Thanks for watching everyone. See you soon.